Sunday Crunch is compiled today by Charlie Cooper. View in your browser. 5 Things to Know 1 The final countdown, the long-awaited, once-delayed Brexit vote is due in a little over 48 hours' time. This is the moment that Theresa May's two-and-a-half-year premiership has been building toward. The question for the Prime Minister? How big the defeat will be? The Sunday papers are reporting predictions somewhere in the range of 100 to 200 votes. No. 10 has been trying to manage expectations about Tuesday's vote by claiming that any defeat by fewer than 100 votes would be counted as a good result, the Mail on Sunday wrote. Cloakroom and Dagger, with the outcome seemingly a foregone conclusion, attention is firmly on what happens next. Sunday Times reports that Downing Street now fears a complete loss of authority, and at least two groups of rebel MPs are plotting to change Commons rules so motions proposed by backbenchers take precedence over government business. Chief Whip Julian Smith reportedly learned about the plans by overhearing MPs discussing them in the House of Commons cloakroom. How it would work, if, as expected, May loses the crunch vote on Tuesday evening, she must table a new plan by the following Monday, the Sunday Times political editor Tim Shipman writes. Tory whips believe plotters would then table an amendment to May's plan, or the business motion that precedes it, proposing that future motions setting out the business of the House could be tabled by non-government members. If that passes, MPs, not ministers, could shape the future of Brexit, history moment, if this is what happens, it would be a major reversal of decades, some say centuries, of parliamentary precedent, in which Parliament, while sovereign, runs by the government's timetable and prioritizes the government's business. May's former director of legislative affairs Nikki Da Costa wargames how things might play out in this Twitter thread, one takeaway message, Speaker John Burkow's upending of parliamentary convention last Wednesday has introduced uncertainty on all sides. But but but, something the whole story is no. 10 attempt to scare the life out of Brexiteer MPs who will fear that this is the mechanism that opposition parties and pro-EU Tory rebels will use to stop the UK. Leaving the EU on March 29, as many leavers have long believed is the default option. As Politic Show editor Kevin Schofield is hearing from a Labour contact, so the source is Julian, Smith, the person who witnessed it is Julian, the legal advice is from Julian and the person who this benefits is Julian, Void. What Void, Transport Secretary Chris Grayling, appearing on Sky News, disputed Sophie Ridge's assertion that the likely outcome of the vote being lost would be a void, where the government should be, I don't think it is a void at all, he said reassuringly, before going on to, to condemn critics of his recent fake Brexit traffic jam exercise, er, believing the evidence of their own eyes, people tend to look at something, form their own impressions and reach conclusions over what's happening, he said. Actually, the trial worked fine, watch. 2. Corbyn's choice, the question facing Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn, meanwhile, is when to pull the trigger on a vote of no confidence in May's government should the deal be voted down. The Observer reports that Labour whips have put MPs on notice for a no confidence motion to be tabled, within hours of a government loss, and the vote itself would be Wednesday. The man himself says, we will table a motion of no confidence at a time of our choosing, but it's going to be soon, don't worry about that, Corbyn told Andrew Marr this morning. Watch. The next Labour manifesto, while an election remains Labour's overarching goal from this week's political drama, Corbyn could not say whether in such an election the party would be running on a pro-Brexit, pro-second referendum or pro-Remain platform. This will be subject to the outcome of a Clause 5 meeting, the party's formal process for determining an election manifesto. And with the membership staunchly anti-Brexit, who knows what the outcome would be. We will decide our manifesto content as soon as we know there is going to be a general election, Corbyn said. Article 50 Extension, the Labour leader also all but admitted that one way or another, a Labour government would have to extend Article 50, saying that an election could take place, February, March time, and that after that there would have to be a time for negotiations with the EU that the current timetable would not allow. 3. 
May's last-ditch appeal, the Prime Minister is set to make a final public appeal for MPs to back her deal Monday, but for now, she has written in this morning's Sunday Express, warning that voting down her deal would be a betrayal of Brexit voters, doing so would be a catastrophic and unforgivable breach of trust in our democracy. So my message to Parliament this weekend is simple, it is time to forget the games and do what is right for our country. The paper carries the somewhat hysterical front-page headline, Back My Deal or Face Catastrophe, 4. No deal, scoops, amid all the speculation about the coming days of parliamentary drama, there are some noteworthy reports in the papers on the government's ongoing preparations for a no-deal Brexit. Military planners, 14 military planners have been dispatched by the Ministry of Defense to key ministries, which also include the Cabinet Office, the hub of the government's Brexit planning, in a sign of concerns inside Whitehall at the prospect of Britain crashing out of the EU with no agreement in place, Michael Savage and Toby Helm report in The Observer. Foreign Office fears, meanwhile, Harry Cole in the Mail on Sunday reports on a Foreign and Commonwealth Office briefing that revealed it is now regarded within Whitehall as highly likely that we will still be in the EU after the supposed Brexit day of March 29th with an extension of Article 50 now the most probable outcome. Up to 20% of Foreign Office staff, 2,800 out of 14,000, are to be removed from frontline work and transferred to Brexit duties, and all proactive policymaking is to be placed on hold. 5. Brussels Intervention Several papers report that the long-awaited intervention from Brussels to help May win the vote could come Monday, but the consensus is that whatever form it takes, it will be too little too late. The Mail on Sunday reports that letters from European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker and European Council President Donald Tusk will be sent Monday, reiterating various assurances on the EU's intention for the backstop to be time-limited, they've said this already many times. But without legally binding commitments or changes to the withdrawal agreement text itself, few Tory Brexiteer or Democratic Unionist Party MPs will be persuaded. The Andrew Marr Show guests, Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn, Brexit Secretary Stephen Barclay, Liberal Democrat leader Vince Cable, and reviewing the papers, former Downing Street aide Katie Perrier, Sun columnist Jane Moore, journalist Paul Mason, transcript. Deja vu, Brexit Secretary Stephen Barclay spoke to Andrew Marr ahead of the big vote, just like he did back in December when he told the host that the Brexit vote would definitely be going ahead that week. didn't, that was the government position at the time, Barclay told Mar today. Along the lines of this deal. Unlike last time, however, Barclay was at least willing to countenance the idea that the vote might be lost and to consider what would happen next, it will be for the House to decide what it is able to support and I suspect it will be along the lines of this deal, he said, a similar line to that taken by Business Secretary Greg Clark in an exclusive op-ed for Politico this week. Cable on Corbyn, Lib Dem leader Vince Cable, whose party openly backs a second referendum, dismissed reports of a budding alliance with Jeremy Corbyn, but did acknowledge the centrality of the Labour leader to how events pan out in the coming days. We're not talking party, political alignments with Jeremy Corbyn. He now has a key role, where he could potentially change the game by coming firmly behind the idea of a people's vote, Cable said. Corbyn backs Burgau. In his interview, the Labour leader came to the defense of under fire John Burgau, and disputed that the House of Commons Speaker was trying to thwart Brexit. What I think he's trying to do is make sure Parliament has an absolute say in it, and he is religiously fair in this chairing. He shuts me up as much as he shuts anyone else up, isn't that the right thing to do? Ridge on Sunday guests, Transport Secretary Chris Grayling, Labour's Shadow Business Secretary Rebecca Long-Bailey, Labour MP John Mann, Conservative MP Anne-Marie Trevelyan, Transcript. Grayling and Drones, as well as Brexit, Transport Secretary Chris Grayling discussed recent disruption at Gatwick and Heathrow airports caused by drone sightings. He said that systems do not exist to completely tackle the problem. This is a new area, the technology is very immature, there is a lot of effort now going into this from airports around the UK. We're working with them to try and find the right solutions, but there wasn't a simple off-the-shelf solution that should have been in place that wasn't in place, he said.
Labor's election stance, Labor shadow cabinet member Rebecca Long Bailey, like her leader, could not say what the party's Brexit position should be going into any snap election that could be forthcoming. Our current manifesto states that we respect the result of the referendum and we want a deal that puts our economy first, she said. Now ultimately, of course, when we go through the next manifesto-making process, we'll have those discussions within the Labour Party, and Marie's not for turning, Tory Brexit ran Marie Trevelyan, when asked if the Christmas break had changed her mind on the Prime Minister's Brexit deal, gave a predictable answer, I'm afraid it hasn't, no. There's been no change to the withdrawal agreement documentation or indeed the political declaration documentation, so my view still stands, man overboard, one person breaking the mold and actually backing May's Brexit deal is Labour MP John Mann. He told Sophie Ridge, a day is a long time in politics, so things can change, but as it stands it is likely I will vote for the deal, yes, Pinar's politics guests, Transport Secretary Chris Grayling, Mayor of London Sadiq Khan, Conservative MP Ian Duncan Smith, Institute of Economic Affairs Associate Director Kate Andrews, Labour List Editor, Sienna Rogers. Warning to MPs, Transport Secretary Chris Grayling, responding to reports that MPs are prepared to try to upend parliamentary convention to prevent a no-deal Brexit, told John Pinar, my message to anyone who is thinking of that is, this is not a one-off over Brexit. You would change the whole nature of the passage of legislation in the future, and to Burgau, I've known the speaker for a long time, and I hope he will refrain from doing anything that would cause controversy around his position, and I think would undermine the credibility of the office of speaker, Grayling added. Khan on far-right threat, London Mayor Sadiq Khan took on ministers who argue a second referendum would fuel the rise of the far-right, the idea that we should allow a fear of the far-right to determine our policy, I find astonishing, he said. The far-right, for example, wouldn't want someone who looks like me to be the mayor of London. Does that mean I don't stand to be the mayor of London? The far-right don't want many, many things. The idea that this government is capitulating to the far right as a reason for holding a public vote, I find astonishing, it's prediction, like pretty much everyone else, conservative Brexiterian. Duncan Smith is convinced May's deal is going down, my personal view is that this deal really isn't, genuinely isn't good enough and will almost certainly be voted down, he said. Sunday papers, click on the publication's name to see its front page, The Independent, Final Say Vote is public's most popular choice mail on Sunday, Burkow's secret, kill Brexit plot, with Tory saboteur The Observer, Labour set to trigger vote to topple May government, The Sunday Telegraph, Tories, on the brink of imploding over Brexit The Sunday Times, a very British coup, Sunday Express, May, back my deal our face catastrophe Sunday Mirror, faces of hate, far-right Brexit thugs exposed week ahead Monday Defence, House of Commons, starting with defence questions, sits from 2.30 p.m. local time. Brexit debate, resumes after defence questions, around 3.30 p.m. local time. Tuesday Health House of Commons starts with health questions, from 11.30 a.m. local time. Brexit vote The Brexit debate resumes after health questions, at around lunchtime, with a vote on Theresa May's Brexit deal expected in the evening, specific timing TBC. European Parliament, European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker due to address MEPs, timing TBC. Wednesday Carney, Bank of England Governor Mark Carney appearing at House of Commons Treasury Committee to discuss the bank's financial stability reports, 9.15 a.m. Local time, Hines, Education Secretary Damien Hines appearing at House of Commons Education Committee, 10 a.m. local time. Scotland, House of Commons starts with questions to the Secretary of State for Scotland, from 11.30 a.m. local time. Prime Minister's questions, at the usual time, 12 p.m. local time. Immigration, second reading debate on the government's post-Brexit immigration bill, timing TBC, after PMQs. Davis, former Brexit Secretary David Davis gives evidence to the House of Commons European Scrutiny Committee, 2.30 p.m. Local time, Thursday Defra, House of Commons sits, starting with environment, food and rural affairs questions, from 9.30 a.m. 
Local time recommended reads in case British politics isn't hectic enough for you, how about a dose of Donald Trump's Washington? With tack of the I word heating up, Politico has compiled an essential guide to the politics and practical realities of impeaching a president. You Westminster watchers are better equipped to make sense of the labyrinth and complexities of the coming political drama than the new statesman Stephen Bush. His cover story from this week's magazine is well worth a read. Politics professor Philip Cowley in Prospect magazine takes the long view of on the parliamentary drama around May's Brexit deal and looks at how a big vote against would compare to other historic government defeats. Sunday Crunch is compiled by Tom McTagg, Charlie Cooper and Annabelle Dixon. We'd love to hear what you think. Drop us a note at tmctog at politico.co.uk, ccooper at politico.co.uk, addixon at politico.co.uk If you were forwarded this message by a friend, you can subscribe here. You can unsubscribe there too. Subscribe to the Politico newsletter family, Brussels Playbook, London Playbook, EU Confidential, Sunday Crunch, EU Influence, DC. Playbook, all our Politico Pro Policy Morning Newsletters.